family, and welcome. We're Bob and Penny Lord. The child Jesus has been a powerful part of the Catholic devotion by the church at large and by the saints in particular as far back as we can remember. Our dear Lord Jesus comes to us in this stage of his life, as do all infants, innocent, vulnerable, untouched by the world. Although Jesus appears as a child, he becomes infinitely involved with our every care. The particular miraculous child Jesus, the Santo Nino we want to share with you today, has been there for people for centuries in different countries, in different parts of the world, but especially in those of the Hispanic culture. Our first report of this Santo Nino miraculously coming to the attention of the world was at a time when Catholics were being crushed under Moorish suppression and occupation in Spain. In the 13th century, the plight of Catholics was one of endless misery, hopelessness, and helplessness. But the Moors could not break their spirit. The more they were tortured and killed for their faith, the more the Spaniards turned to their Lord, their Mother Mary, the angels and the saints. And in response to their endless fidelity, their Father in heaven showered down single grace, the grace he has bestowed upon the martyrs throughout the centuries to bear all forms of cruelty, torture, and ultimate death for our faith. The town of Atocha was overrun by Moors. The Moorish jailers were particularly cruel to their prisoners. The villagers of Atocha bore witness to the deplorable living conditions in the prisons as their men, their sons, brothers, husbands, and fathers were imprisoned in the dungeons. As one cruelty after the other failed to break the spirit of the villagers, the Moorish lord come, came up with another plan. They would not succumb. New restrictions were imposed on the prisoners and their loved ones. Only members of families of those in jail were allowed to bring food or provisions of any kind to their inmate families inside. Without the meager food they were allowed to bring in, the prisoners would have starved to death as the Moors did not feed their prisoners. But sadly, even that was to come to an end. The Moorish lord in charge issued another order. Only children under 12 years of age were allowed to visit the prisoners who were close members of their families and bring them food. The women of Atocha appealed to their mother. They went down on their knees in front of the statue of Our Lady of Atocha. They pleaded with Our Lady and the divine son she held in her arms to help their loved ones in prison who had no one to bring them food and water. It was the 11th hour. It did not look as if help was on its way. Their men were on the verge of starvation. A very strange and truly miraculous thing happened. Word began to leak out from the prison that even the inmates without children to bring them food were being fed. Life returning to their faces, their pallor changing from ashen gray to a rosy healthiness. The children, who were allowed to bring food to their families in jail, reported they saw a young child dressed in pilgrim's clothing come to the prisons at night. This little boy, they said, somewhat under the age of 12, brought food and water to those who didn't have children under 12 to bring them food. His small gourd of water seemed bottomless, and his tiny basket never ran out of food. He talked to the prisoners, consoled them, prayed with them, and gave them hope. By the time they ha he had left, they had been filled physically and spiritually. They all knew without asking that he was the child Jesus. After all, he came at night. The Moorish jailers finally caught wind of what was happening and put on additional prison guards at night to try to catch the child who was bringing food to the Catholic prisoners. But they could never find him. They would stealthily comb the corridors. They would hear prisoners take, talking quietly, lovingly to someone. But when they broke into the cells, there was never anyone there but the prisoner who would smile at his captors, then turn over on his straw mat and return to a peaceful sleep. 
If the situation was bad for the Catholics locked up in the jails, it was no picnic for those on the outside. Their lives were constantly in jeopardy. Villages had to be afraid to leave their homes. There were stories of townspeople who, out of dire necessity, had to go to visit relatives in distant villages or cities. On their way, they could count on being accosted on the roads, robbed, beaten, and often killed. Although no one could prove that this happened at the hands of their Moorish captors, all visible evidence pointed to them. Because the travelers were Catholic, they were not welcome in the local inns as the innkeepers feared the wrath of the Moors. Consequently, many had no recourse but to sleep in the forest or on the side of the road. They too reported that a little boy dressed as a pilgrim would come to them with food and water and whatever else they needed. Not only that, but the little pilgrim would suddenly appear when all seemed lost and help them out of dangerous situations. If to avert wayside perpetrators they should get lost, a pilgrim around 12 years of age appeared. He would not only guide them, but often accompany them on their journey. When he was confident they could continue without him, he would warn them which roads were safe and which were not safe to travel and would end up laying out a plan how to get to their destination safely. Because this miraculous event began in Atocha, the child received the title, the Holy Infant of Our Lady of Atocha. Stories of miracles spreading the shrine of Our Lady of Atocha began being a well-visited shrine in Spain as early as the 13th century. During the time of the miracles in the 13th century in Spain, the Santo Niño de Atocha was connected to the statue of Our Lady of Atocha. Devotion to Santo Niño continued even after Spain was liberated from the Moors. The Spaniards continued to turn to Santo Niño de Atocha for help in dealing with prisoners. For this reason, hearing the title of patron saint of prisoners, as prayer after prayers were answered, no longer limiting the holy infant to aiding prisoners, the faithful expanded their petitions. They turned to the Santo Niño if there was an accident in a mining shaft and miners were trapped in the tunnel of the mine. As the Holy Child had gone into the dungeons and helped those trapped there, why not their loved ones now in the mines? As the need continued and the prayers rang up to the Santo Niño, the little shoes continued to become soiled and worn as the beloved child of God set out to answer the pleas of the people of Spain. Wherever we go, we can bring our Lord Jesus or the harbinger of evil, his enemy Lucifer. A new world and with it new opportunity emerged to bring Jesus to people who knew him not. The conquistadores and the Franciscans set out for the new world and with them tools to evangelize to the native of this new land. Statues of Jesus and Mother Mary, the saints and the angels accompanied them. The tradition of Santo Nino de Atocha would not stay confined to Spain, but joined the expedition to the new world across the sea, initially to Mexico. After Our Lady appeared to Juan Diego on Tapiac Hill in Mexico City in 1531, great conversions came about, eight million in seven years, and with them a need for missionaries to share the good news. In 1554, during this great explosion of the Holy Spirit, the statue of Our Lady with the child Santo Niño de Atocha was brought by Franciscan missionaries from Atocha, Spain, to the state of Zacatecas, Mexico, and this little village of Fresnillo. Immediately, miracles abounded in this land. Everyone spoke of the compassionate little person, so young, so innocent and beautiful, who appeared to those needing his help. As he had done in Spain, so he did now. He traveled among the lost and sometimes forgotten, usually at night. After all, had he not chosen to do that during the Moorish occupation in Spain, go among the prisoners and those stranded and in need of help in the evening? After many miracles that occurred in Fresnillo, the statue of Santo Nino separated from his mother. No one knows how or why, for sure. We believe it was miraculous. When you visit the shrine, parishioners like to point to where the Santo Nino sat formally in his mother's arms. They probably will take you by the hand and bring you to the Holy Child's own chapel where he is now venerated at the shrine. 
In addition, they will not fail to show you the chapel of Our Lady of Atocha, located at the same shrine, the chapel called Santuario de Plateros. The statue of the Santo Nino had been seated in his mother's arms, so when the statue was separated from that of his mother, he was already in a sitting position. The people in the church placed him on a chair, more like a throne, where he sits to this day. In his left hand, you'll see the staff with a jug attached to it. In his right hand, you'll find the basket, which is always empty. When one sees it, because he has been out all night giving the food and water away, However, it has been attested to for centuries on end that when the Santo Nino is out on the road helping prisoners or travelers, the basket is always full of food and the gourd is always full of water. Because he goes out at night ministering to those in need, he has been referred to as the night walking infant of Atocha. They tell us that each morning, the sisters at the shrine dust off his shoes only to find them the next morning soiled from his many travels through the night. The shrine is typical of any holy tribute given to our Lord Jesus and his mother Mary. Memorabilia and vestiges of serious illnesses and helpless deformities line the walls of the little chapel with wheelchairs, crutches, and the traditional ex votos, giving testimony to the faith of the people and the heavenly rewarded response to that faith. There are paintings or retablos which tell eloquently the stories of prayers offered and answered. There are endless retablos showing prisoners praying for their release. These retablos date from the late 1500s in the 16th century to the 1960s in the 20th century. It is evident from this and the many testimonies passed down that many miracles have taken place through the intercession of the Santo Nino. One miracle which was chronicled in 1829 tells of a woman who was wrongly sentenced to prison. She pleaded with the authorities that she had been wrongly imprisoned but to no avail. To make matters worse, she could find no one who would come forth to help her prove her innocence. She prayed tirelessly to Our Lady of Atocha and the blessed infant in her arms for help. The more she prayed, the more it seemed help was not forthcoming. But this dear lady believed, with all her heart she believed, so she kept praying. One night, a young man elegantly dressed entered the prison from nowhere, it seemed. He brought food and water to the distressed woman. He said it was in response to a request the imprisoned woman had made to his mother. She begged him for help with her plight. He was able to free her from the jail. She asked him his name, that she might remember him and pray for him. He said to her, my mother is Maria of Atocha. My name is Emmanuel of Atocha. It didn't occur to her at the time what the young man was telling her regarding his identity. She walked all through the night towards the little town of Fresnio that she might go to the shrine of the Lady of Atocha and give thanks for the miraculous escape she'd had because of her intercession. When she entered the church, she saw the statue of the Santo Nino in the arms of Our Lady of Atocha at the main altar of the church. She could see that this was the same child who had helped her at the prison. Then she remembered the tradition of the Santo Nino and how we would come to the prisons at night. She knew that Our Lady and Our Lord Jesus had answered her prayers. Thousands of pilgrims come processing, petitioning, offering thanksgiving on their knees, their arms filled with bouquets of flowers, their children walking beside them, and their infants in their arms. They believe the Holy Infant will help them. The Santo Nino is always depicted as a pilgrim around 12 years of age. This is fitting, as it has been written that our Lord, when he went to Jerusalem with his mother and St. Joseph, was a pilgrim 12 years old. The Santo Nino is wearing a plumed hat. He's usually dressed in velvet with elaborate embroidery, his slippers gold and shiny. His hair is long and curly, his face precious to behold. In his left hand, he holds a jug or a gourd, as was the means pilgrims use to drink water on their journey to the shrines. In his right hand, 
He holds a tiny basket filled with food, except after he's been out all night distributing food to the needy. Then the basket is empty. Mm -hmm. Tradition down through the ages speaks of him visiting the ill and infirm, the poor and the helpless. During the night, bringing hope to those who believed they were hopeless. They say on any given night he can be found out on his appointed task, not only caring for those in need, but bringing a ray of light into the darkness of those in despair. The statue of Santo Nino de Atocha, imported from Spain, can be found in the small village of Fresnillo, Mexico. But that's not the end of the story. As we said before, devotion to the Santo Nino spread all over the world, mostly in Spanish-speaking countries. We know that as Spain sent explorers to the far corners of the world, with them came statues of the saints, the Blessed Mother, and the Santo Nino. And with that, we come to the very strong devotion to the Santo Nino in New Mexico, in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. There is a sanctuary there called El Santuario de Chimayo. Now, this was a very holy place before El Santo Nino arrived. It has been known as the Lourdes of America. Actually, this shrine was initially made famous by a miracle of the cross, which we showed in another program. In addition to the miraculous crucifix, El Santuario de Chimayo is also and most especially famous for the Santo Niño de Atocha who dwells here. There is another tradition that, that happened in this area, and that's the tradition of Santo Niño de Atocha. And we're going to tell you a little bit about that. Originally, it had been in the little room next to the, uh, the chapel. main chapel. Uh, but now it's in a little tiny chapel. They by built its itself. own little built chapel. its own little chapel. And people go from this. It's right within a short walking distance. They go from this sanctuary to that sanctuary. And miracles have been attributed to petitioning to Santo Nino here. There seems to be a great comfort in appealing to the child Jesus. We found this when we wrote the book, Miracles of the Child Jesus. We found it when we started to do the programming. People love to share with the child Jesus. And, and there's a peace, there's a comfort about it. The people feel secure in speaking to Jesus, the child. Um, so we have, we have a couple of miracles that took place uh, through the intercession of Santo Nino de Atocha. He's the one whose feet got so dirty, <laughs> every morning they would go into the, the, the shrine and they would look at the statue of the, of the infant Jesus. His shoes were all filthy. So a tradition came about about leaving your babies, your infant shoes, at the, at the shrine of Santo Nino because he will use those shoes to walk around as he goes helping people at night. He has been affectionately dubbed Santo Nino Perdido, a holy infant lost by many of the parishioners because he is not present in the church at night. Devotion grew to such great proportions they built another church next to the sanctuary in 1850 in honor of Santo Nino de Atocha. It's a popular belief by the natives that the Santo Nino was found in the same area of the holy dirt. A farmer and his daughter were plowing his fields when suddenly the girl heard what she thought were church bells tolling from beneath the earth. She implored her father to dig and retrieve them. He dug and not only found the bells, but a wooden statue of Santo Niño da Tocha. Which probably came from Mexico some many, many years before. Since that time, stories have spread throughout New Mexico and now environs telling of miracles happening through the intercession of the, of the Holy Cross and of Santo Niño. Thousands of pilgrims come beseeching the child Jesus for healings and then return offering thanksgivings for favor received. As you look about the church at the demonstration of faith and gratitude, the many letters, pictures, or retablos of those healed, photos of those saved in serious car accidents, when you behold the crutches left, read the testimony shared, catch the sweet fragrance of candles burning, 
You are filled with the awesome reality, the everlasting faith and trust of the faithful of the Roman Catholic Church, the faith that God can and will do anything to help his beloved ones according to his will. One of them is about, and happened in Desert Storm. And it says, here's a, a, a letter, a, a testimony. She said, when my daughter served in Desert Storm, I too made a promise that we would walk to Shemayo from the National Cemetery in Santa Fe when she returned unharmed. Along with a friend, we walked almost 25 miles, taking almost eight hours three years later. Now, traditionally, that's where the pilgrims walk from. It's down at the Rosario, and they walk from there, the cemetery in that area, all the way up here. It's a 25-mile uh, hike, and many people do it barefoot. A lot of people will do the last 20 or 30 yards on their knees. It's in petition and thanksgiving. They don't mind suffering for what they're asking the Lord to do for them. Another, when my grandson was diagnosed with leukemia at age three, we made a visit to the sanctuario and he was given a special blessing by a priest. He, my grandson, was told because of the chemo that he would never have children. Today, he is a healthy 21-year-old with two young daughters. Praise God. Would you like to tell them about the Pearl Harbor? OK, we just want to share one about when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Among the first American troops were the New Mexican National Guard. They fought magnificently throughout the long and bitter siege through Corregidor and the death march of Bataan. All the people here, all the family of those of that National Guard who were uh, overseas fighting in the Pacific, prayed to Santo Nino de Atocha and they made pilgrimages here. They all made a solemn vow that if their families, their loved ones, survived the war, they would make a mass pilgrimage from the city of Santa Fe down at the, the um, Rosario, all the way up here by foot. Back home, their families, kneeling at the Santa Nina Shrine, seconded the men's promise. At the war ends, bewildered citizens of New Mexico, not of the Catholic faith, watched in wide-eyed amazement as 2,000 pilgrims, wearing, most of them wearing military uniforms, and their families, who had been in the Bataan death march in Japanese prison camps in Corregidor, walked from that cemetery the 25 miles all the way up to the shrine but only a handful of those 2,000 pilgrims realized that the road to Chimayo did not begin in Santa Fe but it had really begun in a little tiny suburb in Madrid nearly a thousand years before we want to share with you a testimony we, we received from a sister in Christ in Louisiana she had bought our book, Miracles of the Child Jesus, during one of our talks. She was reading it the next day when her husband complained of severe stomach pains, which lasted four hours. They decided to go to the emergency room. While he was dressing, she prayed the prayer to the little Santo Nino, which we're going to pray right now. O miraculous infant of a torture, cast thy merciful look upon my troubled heart, so inclined to pity. Be softened by my prayer and grant me these favors which I ardently implore thee. And then she mentioned her request. Take from me all affliction and despair, all trials and misfortunes with which I am laden. For thy sacred infancy's sake, send me now thy consolation and aid and grace that I may praise thee with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. O divine child of Atocha, hear my prayer and grant my petition. And then repeat three times the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. Our sister in Louisiana prayed this prayer, and as her husband came out of the bedroom, he told her his pain was completely gone. Praise you, Jesus. It's an exciting faith that we have. Faith is what it's all about. 
having faith that God will answer our prayers. And here he gives us living proof that he does this. And you know the remarkable thing about God is that if we do not seek him out, he will seek us out, as he did here. He came here for the people, for them. You know, this, I, I heard the, that this is one of the poorest states in the Union. This dear state, this beautiful state with beautiful, holy, pious people. But it is also one of the most faith-filled states yes, in the Union. Yes, yes, yes. They have the riches of their faith and their tradition, and they live it. The people come, all ages, or all, all religions, it's not just Catholics, but all religions come here, and it's, it's just a melting pot of faith. The Lord is asking us to be like little children, to trust in Him and His mercy. Is this why the Lord has inspired us to bring you accounts of miracles brought around through the intercession of the child Jesus? Is He asking us to remember when as little ones we trusted our earthly fathers, placing ourselves in their hands? Is He not saying how much more we can trust our Heavenly Father? Is this why He's coming to you in the simplicity and innocence of a little child. Let the child Jesus take you by the hand and lead you to the Father. Trust in him. He will never let us down. He knows how much we love him and Mother Church. Be not afraid. Our church will rise from the ashes. She always has. Turn to the child Jesus. He will lead you and Mother Church to victory. We love you. We love you. God bless you. God bless you.